Okay, let's get into this video. No, that's what we're not about to do. Let me tell you, there has been a billion and one obstacles just trying not to get this video out today, but I am determined. Like, this is my second time recording this. You know, even when I was trying to get this video, my phone started talking about no storage. Then I, when I recorded this video the first time, the sun moving up and down, my hair, the hot comb stops working, was trying, the devil was trying, but when God tells you to do something, you can't let obstacles that come in the way stop you from executing. My name is Rachel, for those of you that don't know, and I am just so tired of not sharing God's glory. I am so tired of sitting on this testimony, knowing the power that is attached, knowing exactly what I went through and how many people can probably relate, how many uni students have been through the struggle, how many people have been through grief. There's so many elements of this story that I know are so relatable and I'm just so tired of not having the courage to execute, holding myself back. So what you see right now is literally about to be a crazy, crazy testimony. It's a testimony of God's grace, God's glory, his favour, his mercy, all of that. God blessed me in my education when there literally seemed like there was no way out. The miracle till this day doesn't make sense but that's the point because his word literally says eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and that is exactly what this testimony involves most of you probably won't know that i went to university of leicester so i've always been you know pretty academically capable like i've always been good with my books so when i was applying i was applying for like all russell group universities and i did apply to go to university of leicester but it was like a joke because I was just like, no, I'm not going to be there. Like, you know, the, the associations with like going to a uni in the Midlands. I'm not actually going to be there. But because I went to school in a predominantly white area, I was just like, I want to be surrounded by my culture. I want to be surrounded by people that look like me, people that sound like me, people that are, you know, they can relate to certain things that I can relate to. I've been to school with white people. Not that there's anything wrong with that before some of y'all come for me, but I've been to school with white people since like primary school, secondary school, sixth form. Now it's an opportunity for me to intentionally immerse myself in my community. So I did apply to the University of Leicester for that reason. But when they gave me my unconditional, I rejected it because I didn't actually have plans to go there. And for those of you that don't know, an unconditional offer basically means you can go to the uni without like any requirements. Like regardless of whatever happens, you're going there. So they gave me that and I was like, honey, like I'm going to University of Nottingham because that's kind of kind of got black people there. But it's mixed. It's a very good uni. So that's where I was trying to go results day come now and bear in mind that like, up until this point like i have believed like i'm academically capable my gcse's i got mostly a's so when results day came <laughs> and i opened up the paper and i saw abc and i established oh i'm not going to nottingham i can't lie to you i definitely cried i definitely definitely cried because it was like you know when you're so set on yeah, I'm doing this thing. I'm going to this place. Like, this is what I'm doing. That's what I thought. I thought I'd be going to Nottingham. I didn't have no backup plan because I was adamant that I was going to get there. You know, I've always been pretty smart. So what would go wrong this time? And I didn't get the grades that I thought I was going to get. And I didn't get into the uni. So I'm like, clearance. Like, hello? <laughs> like, I'm on the phone to clearance. Like, um, so can I still like go back to Leicester? Is that, is that still possible? And long story short, I end up in University of Leicester. I'm telling you guys this backstory because I need you to understand the context. Like, I need you guys to understand why the miracle is as big as it is. When I get to Leicester, because I was like, okay, cool, I'm here. And I, I didn't really want to go to uni, in all honesty. I didn't really want to go. My parents kind of like, let me not say they pressured me, but they highly encouraged me. Yeah, yeah when I got there, like, I was like, cool, if I'm if I'm in Leicester and I'm not, I, like, I don't even want to be in uni, I'm about to have the maddest experience ever. Like, I was out 25A, I was going to every single party, yeah, I was outside, <laughs> I was outside, I was at every single party, every single rave, every single motive, house party, a cop, you mention it, like, I was already there, I was already there approaching towards like the ending of the year let me say around like March May times I kind of got bored of the party lifestyle like I'd been doing it so much I'd had the Leicester experience and I was kind of tired of it so I left Leicester pretty early in the year now we're in second year 
and I still kind of had that like oh, don't want to go back feeling in um September and bear in mind most unis begin in September so most people move back in the beginning of September me I didn't go back till like October like, so like I was totally over and done with the whole oh uni da 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 like it was getting a bit intense like it was getting a bit tough and I wasn't really here for it so obviously now I went back because I had to like I literally didn't have no other choice I'm in second year and all I'm if you haven't figured out I'm Nigerian so going back to uni wasn't really like a discussion you, you just gotta do it like so I went to uni in 2018 that's when I started and obviously COVID-19 was literally right in the middle of my degree so now we've entered into 2020 now this is the year that COVID starts getting so serious and isn't it mad that it's been two years already like wow anyway came back to Leicester in like middle of January so I'd been gone for like a month and a half term had already started as per like mm, yeah obviously uni wasn't online back then so if you're missing lectures you're missing lectures like I've had so many meetings about my attendance I've actually lost count fast forward Covid started getting a bit serious and I remember my dad started getting sick around March and at this point in time we were just thinking like oh he came back from Nigeria and you know he gets malaria whenever he comes back so that's probably what this is you know back then there wasn't enough information there wasn't covid tests so if you have covid like you're not really to know like there wasn't that much information at the time this was the first time that I'd actually seen him like sick sick and prior to that maybe I've seen him with a cold but you know like nobody saw what was coming next and then fast forward he passes away yeah you see the way I dropped it on you and you probably didn't see that coming? That's exactly how it was in my household. Like he passed away and till this day, there are so many questions that it's just like, it was just, it was a, a, so much to deal with. It was definitely, undoubtedly the worst time of my life. I can say this with confidence. We were trapped in the house. The last time I saw my dad was in the house and that's the same house that we were trapped in like that we had to isolate people couldn't come to our house like come inside our house it was just such it was it was a dark dark time but with that being said God really showed up Hebrews 13 verse 5 I will never leave you I will never forsake you God definitely stood on that it was just crazy so he passed away in April that year April 2020 and we had to bury him in December 2020 and up until that point me and my siblings we hadn't been to Nigeria in like 10 years and the, you mean to tell me like the next time that we're going to Nige is for a burial and that burial is my dad's yeah like make it make sense I don't even want to dwell on that because it's taken me a really long time to get to this point that I can talk about it and I can't even believe I'm sitting here on camera discussing it it's it's just God that I can even do that that I can have the strength to do that and another part of why I didn't want to share this story is because I didn't want to have to come on here and tell people that part of my life like that doesn't need to be shared but it's part of the testimony which is why I have to share it I thank God that you know, we had good family and good friends who were supporting who made sure that their presence be known in our lives they let us know we wasn't alone like the spirit of God was within the house you know that's even enough about him back to the original the original testimony like I told you I'd already come home because I was pretty much over uni so when this like this death happened I was set to have exams in um, April I believe and there was no way I was sitting them and bear in mind my grades had been on like 2-2 or like really low 2-1s so there was no way that like when my grades were on that I was about to sit exams and know that I was definitely about to fail them and luckily mitigating circumstances I didn't have to sit the exams then I got to do it at a later point which was in August so when August time came, mentally, I was not trying to do these exams. Like already, you know, nobody wants to do exams, but it was even worse because it's like, I'm experiencing grief. I'm trying to live my life like normal now that things are open and I'm trying to be happy. And you know, like I'm trying to put myself in a good place. And now you're telling me to do exams when I'm already over this degree that I wasn't even trying to do in the first place. Okay then. Like, no, it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. Like, I wasn't laughing at all. The two things that kept me going 
were my family but specifically my dad in his last couple of years he had gone back to uni and he had studied law that was what he was super passionate about and um obviously i was doing a law degree so when things would get hard i would just remind myself this man in his late 50s took himself back to uni he graduated he got called to the bar he went to nigeria to get qualified like sis what's this exam that's before you that you can't do like you know, he always used to say, say to me you can do anything you set your mind to so i carried that mentality into my exam season and obviously the second thing that got me through it which i should have put first but you know like just got caught in the heat of the story was god god gave me like strength the miracle that he performed crazy how did i go from two twos and i've got the receipts honey like i'm gonna put them somewhere in this video so you can actually see i went from two twos to ending the year with a first class overall <laughs> of our class in the ending of my second year god even helps me one of our family friends who had also gone to uni of lesser who had also studied law and she was the year above me something summoned me to um reach out to her for her to check over my work i swear if it wasn't for her her expertise i don't think i would have got some of the grades that i did because even the modules where it was like they were you know there's them modules where it's like they have you in a like they have you in a chokehold they literally have you in bondage because they're very very difficult those ones were the ones i excelled in the most and bear in mind i i think i'd only seen like one first class in my whole basically two years i'd only seen like one first class so for me to see this many i was getting high two ones and predominantly first class i was like make it make sense like this is not my own doing this is not my own doing this can only be god and don't get it twisted i was putting in the work but still in my a levels when i had put in the work i didn't get the grades that i thought i was going to achieve so the fact that it happened this time around is like more confirmation of the fact that god was working god was working it's crazy because it's un only until you come out of these situations that you can look back on these things like wow so that's why that needed to happen so obviously I got my grades back at ending of August and like I said the term was supposed to begin in the beginning of September now and bear in mind the burial's coming up in December so it was an intense int like I yo if I wasn't in the mental place that I am today I'd be crying telling you this story because it was so intense for me like when September came around I just did not have I'd used all of my energy pouring into that august exam period so i had no strength to do uni when uni had started in september i would definitely say i was in a depressive state i would wake up and literally do nothing and it's crazy because like it's not that i was sad like i wasn't crying or like experiencing grief in like a super emotional state at that point in time i was just i didn't have the motivation to do anything like i didn't care about anything just like mentally exhausted i'm so like not ready for this academic year and on top of that we're preparing for the burial and like i said we haven't been to nigeria in 10 months so the term has started and i didn't they would be emailing me like you've got zero percent attendance you've got assignments you know those assignments that they give you that don't count i didn't do none of them they'll be emailing me i'd be having meetings like what's going on because we understand that you've gone through grief but we gave you the option to either defer the year or drop out and you said you wanted to do the year so why aren't you doing the work why aren't you in the lectures that's the questions they were asking me and i was thinking in my head take it down a notch and relax because I am grieving and I am depressed and I don't even care about this degree like I don't care even one of my friends we'd be on FaceTime regularly I'd be telling her you know I've got assignments like I should be writing this essay but I don't even care and um I wasn't doing the work I didn't do like I, I didn't do anything like I was not a student at that moment in time to the point where we've gotten it's December now it's time to go to Nige and I realized like damn there's been quite a few assignments and actually these ones that don't count and I haven't done anything because my grading was split into like two parts so half of the exams I would sit that would actually count were in January and the other half was supposed to be in April and January's approaching and I haven't even done any of the mock assignments so how am I about to submit an assignment like how am I actually gonna submit a piece of work when I haven't even practiced like there's just no way like that I'm not about to do that so like, like I tried to write a essay plan one day and yeah that essay plan is still planning itself in my laptop we came back from Nigeria and I still felt the same like 
in fact, if anything, the depression was a bit more like weighty now because it's like the reality of the death has hit me. And on top of that, my family were talking about, oh, let's move houses. Like, let's move. We don't want to be in this house anymore. We've been in here for all these years. And on top of that, there's too many memories that remind us of dad. Like, let's just move. And usually I'm very good with change. Like, I embrace change. I, ain't, I don't really have a problem. But this specific change... I wasn't I was so resistant like I was the only one in the house who, who was like I'm not trying to go all my friends are here I've done childhood I entered my 20s I was just not trying to go at all like I wasn't trying to go so that was even another thing and I remember one day like bear in mind I've been doing nothing so now we're in February academic term started in September I've done niche like I haven't done anything at all and I remember one day my brother came to me and he was like um I'm not gonna lie do you think that you're even doing the work of any student right now? Forget graduate level, forget first class level. Do you think that you're doing the work of any student? It was kind of like, oh damn, he's right. Like maybe I should do something. So I remember like one day me and my friend went to the library to try and catch up with the lectures that we'd missed out on. I had so many, ah, oh, had so many lectures. Like I literally, I had a whole term of lectures to catch up with plus January had already started I had an insurmountable amount of work to do and I did start doing the work like a, one lecture here every three days I would do like one lecture thinking that it wasn't making a difference but do you know another thing that I've learned like coming out of this situation is from Atomic Habits it's about one percent changes I was thinking that oh this one lecture doesn't mean anything so let me it, like it's not going to make a difference but little did I know that when it was time for me to write the assignments I was making little changes which made it easier for me let me start there I had opted to do the dissertation module and my supervisor left in first term of uni like as in so he was here for the first time but he left in the second term but it didn't really affect me because like I said I wasn't doing any work anyway they gave me another lady she wasn't even a law lecturer she was um, a criminology tutor because I'd done my dissertation on the George Floyd case my sister she had taken my book and I was basically saying well guess I can't do the work then like guess I can't do the work so one day she calls me and she's like pick a book and I'm like mm, excuse me and she's like yeah pick a book like it's not me that's gonna stop God from doing what he needs to do pick a book when I get home you're gonna start working if it means I have to sit with you on the table you're gonna do the work and this is the importance of having good people around you because from that day I actually did start doing work don't get me wrong it still took everything within me to wake up and to do work to wake up and not just lazy around and do nothing like it required so much from me and I had to just do it like I reminded myself no but if dad was here you wouldn't be doing this stuff you would be in uni even if he wasn't putting your all into it you'd be doing something so regardless of how you feel you need to kind of put that to the side and still fight for yourself at least that's the very least you can do in that moment is fight for yourself I started doing my work I started catching up on lectures and bear in mind this was March this was the in the beginning of March March the 1st was the day she got me the book and I said 50% of my exams began in April if I didn't mention the January exams I deferred them I told them there's no way I'm doing it like I'm literally I'm, I'm doing the burial now so yeah like we're gonna have to defer these exams April being next month and I've got two months to write a 10k dissertation I've got 50% of my exams which altogether those paper papers equaled about 15k probably even more than that because I had like one assignment that was 5k a 3k another 3k yeah it was definitely more than that let me just call it 25k for the sake of the sake so I had about 25k to write and my dissertation supervisor she even said to me I'm not gonna lie people that do the dissertation module start planning from the year in advance like they start planning in the summer of them entering third year and you're coming to me telling me you don't even have a question I don't know how you want me to help you and I'm not even trying to like make you feel no type of way because I'm aware of your situation but I don't know if this is something we're gonna be able to do that's what she was telling me and I remember I even had a meeting with the student support because of my attendance they were telling me like final warning like all of this stuff no seriously pay attention to those email emails because prior to that I'd been ignoring them and yeah they ended up with me on my final warning and they were telling me at the rate that you're going don't you think it's the best option for you to defer the year because you haven't really done any work so even if you stop right now it's not really like you're not going to be affected so why don't you just defer the year and something just told me no like just 
persist prevail like keep on going like persevere just persevere so that's i was telling them nah like i'm not trying to do that i just want to get over and done with if this is the way i feel now imagine one year from now like i just want to do this uh, i just want to finish the degree so she asked me okay so what grade are you aiming for and i was like is it cheeky if i aim for that first class and she was just like went silent she was like i'm not going to tell you no but good luck good luck like i've never seen that happen before and i was like okay cool this is the amount of work that i have to do this is how much i can put in what i can't do naturally this is where god intercedes supernaturally i have seen it in my life that what i had to actually do like the work that was required of me i couldn't do it it wasn't humanly possible and i know that the evidence that you will be seeing please pause and take the time to read how much was actually required read exactly what you're seeing on the screen the things that were required of me wasn't humanly possible it wasn't my doing like god actually interceded he took absolute control my whole degree my whole life is just a testimony of that he he took control he made sure that this testimony would be one that eyes have not seen how did i do 25k words in two months if you didn't figure out by now honey i got a first class i didn't just pass my year i didn't pass my law degree i got a first class in all of my modules i got a first class i should have said that at the end but you know i got a bit excited march has come you know i'm putting in shifts i was putting in night shifts like i would literally start working from like 6 p.m till like six or seven or eight in some cases even 12 the next day like i was 12 hours light work that's what i was doing every single day to catch up with my lectures start writing my assignments how god done it i don't even know bear in mind april the month where all of my ish is due half of my academic year the 50 percent, and my diso is due is the month that we moved houses now bear in mind we didn't move houses like 10 minutes away or up the road you know it's not that deep like i'll still see my friends we moved an hour and a half away we I can't believe we moved i don't even want to get into that bear in mind when we moved there is a great service in the area and it took us a while to get wi-fi at least like a week and a half and this is april like if it was february it wouldn't be that deep i can afford to take those 10 days off but every day counts every day counts how i was doing work i do not know I don't even, I can't like, how God was doing things, doing the most supernatural things, I don't know. Like, I literally don't know, but I was doing work. Let me tell you, my mobile network wasn't working. Like, EE, -E, okay, EE -E wasn't working in this area. I would have to hotspot my phone, hotspot my laptop. Even though I was putting in all this work, I literally hated every minute of it. And let me not say that I was depressed, but I was overwhelmed. I was definitely going through it. Oh, the pressure, it was so mad it was so mad it was exhausting like, i was getting headaches every day because i would literally i would work from like 6 till 6 p.m till 10 a.m the following day sleep for six hours get up like chill for like an hour two hours three hours and then start my shift again not too long after that i was just it was back to back work back to back to back to back to back back to back like my whole life was just uni i remember even writing a snap something on snap like listen save this snap so that if you ever decide that you you're going back remember what you went through because this is not a joke yeah i managed to get all of my work done and i will show you what they said about my work like them before when i was in second year when they were telling me like they didn't really even understand the points that i was making it was like i was writing off topic that's what they were saying about my work before but let me tell you what they were saying about the, it wasn't even me it was about the god that i serve because let me tell you like when god's glory and into your life it's too much like you can't even the comments were a reflection of that because it wasn't me like it was not me me that was depressed how many months ago people that go through depression for like years and years and years every single thing that could be going wrong was going wrong like my weight is fluctuating if you know the way my belly used to bloat when i was in uni i was having so many problems and still god was preserving me he kept me going he was giving me new ideas that like i would be in my room like 
bruh, having the, the, my head, uh, like my head is gonna burst open because the ideas that God was giving me was too much. When I should have been tired in bed sleeping, he was giving me energy, giving me strength to put in those shifts. And I put in those shifts and August came around. He did it again. He gave me strength to keep on going. And I put in all the work and lo and behold, that again, some of my grades and up until August, I had got first class on everything. And it was like, yay. Like, if I thought what he'd done in second year was the big deal, nah, like, first class on every assignment. Every assignment. I had a first class, my diso, a first class, the supervisor. God even blessed me with her because even though she was kind of, like, mm, being a bit doubtful in the beginning, no shade, she helped me so much. God used her to turn my work around. I'm definitely going to have to publish that because that is a piece of work that is a like it's a masterpiece i am so proud of what i enjoyed in that season and everything that i was able to do and everything that god was able to do through me and with me in my whole third year i didn't do any of the mock exams or mock assignments like i had said so everything that i actually submitted counted and every assignment that i submitted bar one just one I got a first class on every sit like i wish i could say every but it's just that one but you know 90 percent was a first class like tell me that 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 isn't the hand of god tell me that isn't the hand of god when i got to uni i was defo doubt in my academic capability because it's like when i did put in the work in my a levels i didn't get the grades that i wanted so now i'm in uni I didn't think that I'd be able to perform. I didn't think that in the midst of grief, God would stand up for me. Like where I couldn't carry myself, he literally carried me. The story is just a testimony because it was nothing less than the glory of God. I, I feel it with everything in me because that's one thing about the devil. He wasn't playing games with me the same way God wasn't playing. He was coming. Like even on the night of my graduation, coming up to my graduation, I wasn't even psyched. I was worried. What if I trip? Like I was sad. Like rah, like I've actually graduated and my dad isn't here to see it. Like we had a connection because of our academics and the fact that he studied law and I studied law and he's not going to be here to see me walk on the stage like it was literally eating me alive like the night before my graduation in this very room i'm recording this video in my sister's room i was literally there having a panic attack even to record this story it took so much encouragement i thought okay cool he wants me to record a testimony i'm gonna do like a little five second tiktok i'm not even gonna talk i'm just gonna put screenshots you know da 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 da, -da. i'll be finding any little excuse just to not come here and talk about this story because I didn't want to have to tell people like all of my negative experiences with grief with moving I'd be thinking like rah like so what are people going to say when I put this video out there like my mind was so consumed with what are people going to say why should I even care about that if you have an understanding that this life that you have isn't your own you're here for God why would you be concerned with what other people are going to think when all you should care is about what God says about you it took me a really long time to get that wrapped in my head to, that I don't need to care about what people are going to say. Like, even in this room, as I speak, I know that he has given me his words. That's what his words said. I will put my words into your mouth. And here I am. There is an absence of fear. There is not 1% of fear it within me right now. And I'm not telling you that to brag because I'm so great. I'm telling you that because that is glory. My testimony, my degree, my first class is glory i just hope that this story does exactly what it was intended to do i just pray that as you listen because i know the glory attached to this testimony and i know that if you're listening to this the god who done it for me can do it for you as well and if you're in uni and you're going through struggles or any type of struggle whether that's trauma whether that's grief depression whatever type of struggle that you're going through you need to understand that there is a way out like who would have thought that's even what i wanted to say when i was placed into university of leicester and I was crying on results day like god how could you do this to me how could you forsake me how could you plant me here maybe if I'd gone to Nottingham I wouldn't have got the first class you don't know that all things are working out for your good so if you're listening to this today please 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 hold on to that please be reminded that whatever you're going through the lord will see you through if it feels like the weight is too much submit it to god if it feels like nah i can't do this by myself you remember you're not supposed to you have a god who pays attention serious attention to every single part of your needs every single part of your life every single thing that you're doing he pays serious attention to you don't have to do this walk by yourself i didn't have to do everything that i'd done with my degree by myself because he was with me i want this video 
to serve as your notice if you know that there is something to do like you have to write a book you have to deliver a speech you need to speak to someone you need whatever it is whatever that thing that's burning so much on the inside of you that you know you need to do this is your sign honey this is your big 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 sign listen go and do that thing the Lord commanded you to be courageous. God isn't suggesting that you do what he's asked you to do. He's not suggesting that you fight for yourself and you fight for the kingdom. He has commanded you. It's an instruction. It's a command. So you need to do that thing. The definition of courage is to have the ability to do what frightens someone. I'm telling you that I was shook to record this video anxiety worrying about what's going to happen in the future and you know what's going to happen if i'm out here talking about god i was so wrapped in fear so it's normal to be afraid courage is the ability to do what you need to regardless you don't know who's waiting who needs to hear that word who needs to hear that testimony who needs to be reminded of god what soul you need to win by putting this out there and i pray i so deeply pray that whoever is watching this video if you haven't given your life to god if you're not taking your faith seriously that this is the opportunity for you to do so what he done in my degree yes a lot of you might see it as oh it's not that big of a deal and people get first class every day the way i was going i should have dropped out i should have been deferred my year but what happened god gave me a first class in the midst of things looking impossible when that woman asked me what do you think you're gonna get she was definitely expecting me to say let me just pass but i didn't just pass god gave me a first class listen there's so much glory that's attached to your name you need to unlock that thing and you are holding yourself back the more that you are resistant and hesitant to putting out that thing that you need to do that birthing that seed that has been placed within you i speak with so much passion because i know what it took me to do this video i know how much my degree cost me i know the amount of work that i put in and for me to hold it back bruh i was just so tired of like knowing how great this story is the power that is attached to that and i'm sitting here hoarding it and you too you want to be doing the same no you need to put that thing out there i pray that you are inspired just from hearing my experience i don't have two heads i'm not better than any of you watching this video right now i'm not more advanced than you or more capable than you if i can do it then you can do it as well i just want to give god the glory i want to give him the praise for preserving me because it's one thing to get the grade and i could still be in the midst of depression i could still be in the midst of anxiety I could be in a really dark place and i'm not and that is only the grace of god so i want to give god all the glory in this moment this testimony is about him i'm sitting here telling you i got a first class like god i just give you the praise i give you the glory i thank you so much for what you have done for me this testimony is proof listen let me tell you something if you needed confirmation that god exists this is it this testimony is your confirmation that God is so alive and real. Do not give up on whatever it is that you're doing. Do not give up on yourself. I pray that you guys have been blessed by this video. If any of you guys can relate to any aspects of this story, anything of what I've shared, comment below. You know, it would be great to connect and just hear about other experiences. Thank God so much for giving me courage. It's just God. I pray that whenever you watch this video, that you have a great day, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. I pray that this video blesses you and I pray that you experience God's absolute glory and I pray that you remain blessed and thank you so much for watching uh yeah that's it